Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to stick to Skåne here in the south of Sweden and we're going to revisit a brewery that I've reviewed a good number of different things from now and I always enjoy trying the different beers that they produce. So for this one we're going to head up to Eslöv which is a little bit to the northeast of me here in Lund and we're having a taste of yet another beer from the Remaluv Gortsbrygli, Remaluv Farms Brewery, Farm Brewery if you want to translate it into English. This one is called the Hop Hatch, it's a limited edition and they're describing this one as a dry hopped brown ale. It comes in at 6% ABV, has a pretty nice looking hop bill on it but we'll come to that later so curious to try this one. It's a style that you don't see too many of these days and my whole interest in this style started of course with the uh, with the Brooklyn Brown of course, a little bit of an American classic. So really looking forward to trying this one and as always I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer. So anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Raymond of Gordsbury Group before. No doubt there will be some more reviews Reviews in the fairly near future. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography based tagging system, so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Raymaluv Gorge Brewery then, on to my brewery notes and this one will be quite quick. So this brewery, as I mentioned to you earlier, are based on a farm in Eslöv, which is a little bit to the northeast of me here in Lund, but they've been brewing here since the winter and autumn of 2014 and in January 2015 they started selling their beers through Slistenbolaga, which is our... Um, statement opio and alcohol that we have here in Sweden. So the owner and founder of this company is Håkan Nilsson and together with his wife Michelle he started his plan for a brewery a couple of years back and the brewery itself is located on the family farm. So Håkan is the fifth generation of his family that has run the farm on the countryside here in Skåne. But the old barn was renovated and a brew house of 1500 litres was installed and then they hired Hampus Olofsson as their brewer in August of 2014 and he'd previously worked for Malmö Brewing Company and he's still there today and he's he's getting a little bit more kind of experimental and adventurous with these different beers that he's producing but he's a very nice guy. I did meet him at one of the Malmö um, Ullen Whiskey Festivals and uh, you can see him there pretty much every year. I think these guys do attend that festival every year but they're always putting out different beers. Particular favourites that I've had from these guys would have to be um, the Red Carol and the Red Slope, they did a, a winter scotch ale which was uh, was really quite nice actually and their canned releases that they seem to do um, are always pretty damn good as well so you know if you get the chance to try some of these beers from Raymond of Gore's Bravery then um, I really recommend that you do particularly the canned releases but some of their darker beers always tend to be pretty nice in the bottles as well but yeah and um, that's all you really need to know about Raymond of Gore's Bravery for the moment if you want to learn a little bit more of course you can check out the brewery website in the description below and you can follow them on Facebook and things like that too. I should also mention actually that they do have a partnership with a local hop farm which is one of the first hop farms to uh, open up here in in Sweden actually which is quite exciting so you they always release a beer every year that's called local hops which is always quite an interesting one but yeah let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself then we can get rid of the brewery notes so as I mentioned to you at the start of the video this one is a 6% brown ale the hops that they've used in here are Simcoe, Cascade, Columbus and Equinot and um, it did say you know I would be guessing that the dry hopping probably will be the uh, the Cascade, or sorry, the, the dry hopping will likely be the Simcoe and the Equinot. The Cascade and the Columbus, I'm guessing, will be used as the bittering hops mainly. But um, yeah, it says here the Hop Hatch uh, Brown Ale is a beer that, ha that is that gives you a nice taste picture. Um, it's a strong and roasted malt uh, with, with a nice dark colour and uh, a full taste. Um, the hops, the hops are are uh, rich in flavour, um, and then you get a nice, basically fruity aroma from it as well. That's basically what this one is saying. If I'm translating that correctly, you can pause it and have a little look for yourself. I've given you a very rough translation of that, but there you can see similar artwork if you like to uh, the other ones that you're going to find from uh, Raymond of Gordsbury. You can see they've got the little chicken on here as well, and that of course is on their bottle cap at the top of the the bottle there as well. But it says in this one you've got wheat malt in here, corn malt and um, yeah it looks so it looks really nice don't know if that's oats havre I can't remember what oats is in Swedish but um, yeah really nicely presented beer this one 
So without further ado, let's get it out and we will get on with the taste. And I'm really curious to see how this one turns out. I can't say, I think I have had a, um, a brown ale with... Um, I've had a brown ale with citra in it. I think I have had one or two maybe with Simcoe in it, but I don't think I've ever had one that's had Equinot before. So this one should be quite interesting. One of the best brown ales I've ever had, incidentally, was uh, Karma Citra from uh, Beer Here, who are now based on uh, Bornholm, which isn't too far away from us here in Skåne, actually, somewhere that I do need to go and have a little look at sometime. But yeah, as you can see with this beer, it's poured a really nice, um, it's actually a very dark ruby colour, um, sort of ru very dark ruby nice mahogany kind of colour actually. I've, I'm not sure how well you're going to see the ruby side of things. You can maybe see it just at the bottom corner here. If I look at the camera control you can see that this beer does have a little bit of a ruby edge to it but you can see there's a nice half finger of a frothy, I would say kind of fawn coloured head, very slightly beige fawn coloured head on this one but you know it looks very very nice um, pretty much as you would expect from a brown ale to be honest, although a little bit redder than I've seen from some of them. But one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and you can see quite a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that head there. But you know, overall it looks pretty nice and uh, I have to say I quite like that actually. But yeah, um, let's have a closer look at the aroma and see how we get on. When you open this beer up incidentally you do start to smell a good bit of the limey notes from the Equinot. That uh, always, that always makes for interesting kind of aromas actually. Oh, yeah. This one's really interesting. The, aro the, the This one's more... It's really interesting. The hops are trying to push their way out and the malts are trying to push their way out as well. Um, so, yeah. It does have a little bit of a... It's, it smells like a, a kind of well-fired bread crust, to be honest with you. The malty side of things, it has... It's definitely got that brown bready quality. Then you've got some of that... Um, roasty um, bread crusty quality coming out of it as well. Definitely some sweet brown sugars, a little bit of caramel in there, but it's quite a well toasted caramel, I have to say, as well. Maybe a little bit of biscuit, but the malt base actually comes across really quite nicely. It's more of a roasty toasty um, brown ale, this one actually, but I'm sure that'll work, that will work with this. But yeah, it's definitely got a nice big American type. Um, brown ale aroma to it. The malts in this one, um, I do like the way the malty character of this beer comes out. Um, in terms of the hoppy side of things then, you get a little bit of earthiness in there. There's a good bit of a floral aromaticity to it as well. It's almost like a kind of licorice aniseedy type thing and that's the Columbus. The Columbus has this very distinctive um, sort of, it's almost, it, it's, it's this sort of licorice aniseedy floral aromaticity to it. It really is um, quite distinctive in um, it really is really quite distinctive, actually, how it goes to uh, how it goes together. I like that um, the aroma that you're getting off this one. It really is very very nice. Yeah, um, it works in that sort of slightly spicy licorice quality that it has. It really works well with the other parts of the malt base, to be honest. So maybe that's why they've gone for Columbus to have a bit of spice in the hops, but to also have a little bit of that roasty toastiness in the um, in the malt base as well. The way that the hops and things go together in this are really nice. But that's the green side of the hops, a nice sort of spicy and um, floral, grassy, aromatic note. But it's also got a little bit of an earthiness to it as well. Um, but on the fruity side of things, that's where this beer gets really interesting. So yeah, you can smell a little bit of a sort of raisiny, slightly plummy kind of thing. And that's what you get when you mix Cascade with... Um, that's kind of what you get when you mix Cascade with uh, one of these slightly darker malt bases. And it's interesting that, actually, one of the things that you can get... This beer, I've got a feeling, might be somewhat akin to like a Cas to, to something like a Cascadian Dark or a Black IPA. Um, so it's kind of interesting that, but I guess if it's got more brown sugars and stuff like that in it, it probably will lean more towards um, the kind of brown ale, actually. That's maybe an interesting thing we can comment about during this video. Um, but to me, the aroma comes across um, really quite nicely. On the fruity side of things, you can definitely pick out a little bit of the limey note in there, like I was saying earlier from the uh, from the Equinot, and the, it does have a little bit of a lemon limey quality to it actually, which builds it, uh, which kind of goes together quite nicely with the um, the grassy side of the green part of the hops, but you can also pick out just a little bit of tropical fruit, and that'll be the passion fruit from the Simcoe. Simcoe's a very, very straight up passion fruity hop, I would say. Um, 
But yeah, it's really nice how everything goes together in the aroma there. It's got a nice bit of roastiness in the malt base, a nice little bit of juicy fruit on top, and also some interesting kind of floral and spicy qualities from the uh, the green side of the hops as well. So as I always say, take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck into it. But we are going to have a taste of this one now. This one is the Hop Hatch, a dry hopped brown ale at 6% ABV from Raymond of Gorsberg, just outside of Eslöv here in Skåne in the south of Sweden. Let's get stuck in. Slandja, Skull. Ooh. Yeah. That is quite nice, I have to say. Um, I really like how everything's going together in this... Um, in this flavour actually, it is everything just works really nicely with this beer it definitely, if you're talking about it in terms of a brownie, it really leans towards the roasty toasty side of things um, and it does, you can feel the middle of your palate just kind of drying out with this one, I will say, I was saying you know, maybe we should compare this with um, no, we should compare this with some of the black IPAs and stuff. It definitely isn't. This is most definitely, it definitely is a brownie. It's probably the slightly more breadiness and caramel qualities that make a brownie or rather than a, a black IPA or a Cascadian dark, as I was saying. It was just, it was just a kind of thought I had when um, there was Cascade in this beer. And from some of the aromas as well, it does remind me of a few of the black IPAs that I've had in times gone by. But yeah, that's a really quite nice brownie, I'll have to say. You know, thumbs up to um, to Hampus on this one. Like I always say, um, or like I've said a couple of times, these guys do some really, really quite nice... Um, they do some really, really nice darker beers. Particularly, I mean, I remember the Red Ale was really nice. Um, they did... Um, they did a Scotch ale as well, which was really good, and um, this one's very nice. Um, their lighter beers are good as well. The local hops, they did a local hops um, brewer's reserve or something like that, and that was a slightly darker beer, and again, I really quite enjoyed that. So I think maybe Hampus has got a little bit of a knack for doing the, the darker beers, and there was also the Sweet Hoof, which is their milk stout, which again was really nice. I do, I do think... I do think it's fair to say that Hampus has a little bit of a knack for his darker beers, uh, but then again he has produced the IPAs that they release in the cans have been pretty damn good as well actually. But yeah, I really like, I, I do like this one actually, so if you get the chance to try this, it is, it is definitely worth having a go at. Yeah. So. Let's try and break this one down. As I was saying, the middle of the palate dries out a little bit. And you start to get more of the roasty toasty qualities out of this beer as well, which is quite interesting. But yeah, um, there's a sort of roasty, very roasty black malt there. That just kind of forms the base of this beer. On top of that, you start to get some of the nice um, brown bready qualities out of this beer. And while you can feel that roasty toasty edge to the beer, you can really feel some kind of sweet malt sitting on top of that. You have a nice uh, brown bready quality there. Um, in the very centre of your palate you've got some brown sugary notes there and it is a kind of toasty caramel but the further you go into the aftertaste it really does start to sweeten up and there's a little bit of a biscuity note in there as well which is um, which is really nice. The way that malt base works is pretty interesting but you really can feel the roasty toasty side of the malts punching their way out actually which is kind of cool. Yeah, I like how everything is um, is going together in this one. This is really, it, it really is quite a nice beer. That this could this be my favourite one that I've had from them. I don't know, um, but again, this is a style that I'm a bit biased towards. I really enjoy a nice brownie like this. But I, to be honest with you, the one thing I will say about this beer is if this is only going to be a a limited edition. I think that's a bit of a shame because it is a pretty nice brown ale. So I hope if Hampus sees this video, I do hope that the, that this one is not going to simply be a limited edition. At least, it'll, at least, hopefully, it should become a seasonal beer. This something like that. But yeah, um, I do like how this one, um, how this one goes together. Um, you can really feel the malt base. The more and more you drink of this one, the malt base does actually sweeten up quite considerably. To be honest with you. Um, 
and it, it really is. It just it just goes together really nicely. I've said that a couple of times in this video. Um, on the hoppy side of things, then back corners of the palate, you've got a nice little bit of earthiness in there. That will be coming from the Columbus. You can just feel that at the back uh, corners of your palate. It does it does build a good bridge between the roasty side of the malt base and the uh, and the hoppy side of things. As you come further forward, it just smooths out a little bit. You get a good little bit of a floral aromaticity there. It does have a little bit of spiciness in there. Again, as I said, that's one of the traits you get with Columbus, and then round the very front curve of the palate. You've got a nice little bit of uh, of that kind of lighter grassy ester that you would talk about. There's a little bit of a kind of um, grapefruity note towards the back of your palate there, which is nice, uh, and that'll be from the cascade. That's the kind of base that the cascade is giving you, and you can feel the further you go into the aftertaste, you start to get a little bit of a a kind of red fruity ester out of it. Um, but yeah, you can definitely feel a little bit of the Simcoe in there, some of the passion fruit you know it's coming out. It was quite a dark flavoured passion fruit actually, but you would expect that when this is a darker style beer. But the interesting point is the sort of limey flavour that you're getting from this beer too. Yeah, the limey flavours, they come out just towards the front part of your tongue there. And they are pretty nice, I have to say. I do like how that um, kind of goes together. Actually, it's it is it, all of the way that the, the flavor, the way that the flavors go together in this beer, is really nice. Um, and this one definitely, I think, as I said, I think Hampus just has a knack when it comes to darker beers, and it's got a really nice balance. Actually, it comes across in the beginning as being quite roasty, but the more that you drink of this beer, the slightly sweeter it becomes. Actually, I like how that. Kind of works out with this beer, so you know, have a go at this one for yourself and see what you think. But I think this is a really quite nice um, example of an American style brown ale. That I would think they've done a good job with this beer. Definitely leans more towards the roasty, toasty side of the spectrum. But like I said, it does sweeten up the the, the more that you drink of the beer. Um, in terms of the mouthfeel, then um, mid-bodied beer carbonation has a little bit of Christmas to this one. This one has quite a wet oily sort of mouthfeel. I've always found this with the Rainbow Loaf beers actually. They have this, they just feel very clean and I think that's a good thing actually. They do feel, um, you. I, if I was tasting this blind, to give you an example, I would think that this beer had come from somewhere like Ora or somewhere further north. I mean I would think this is a beer that's brewed with pretty you know, mountainous water. I don't know quite how they do that actually, if they treat their water or something like that, but it does come across with this very clean, slightly minerally um, mouthfeel to it. And I do like that in the beers actually. It does remind me of some of the beers I drink back home in Scotland. Um, but yeah, nice little bit of hoppy bitterness to this beer. If we're talking about IBUs, I think this beer might be up around the kind of 50 IBU mark, something like that. Um, both from a little bit from the malt base and from the hops. Um, good little bit in the malt base, as I say, you've got a little bit of roastiness on the bottom, some smoothness and sweetness on top of that, and you've also got some nice juicy fruity quality to this beer as well towards the front of the palate, and the beer dries out a little bit the further you go into the flavour, but it does sweeten up at the same time. But yeah, overall, a really, really nice example of the... Uh, the brown ale, my only one complaint about this would be that if that it's a limited edition because I think this is a beer that they could at least release as a seasonal. It's a really nice brown ale that and uh, it'd be a shame if it was never seen again to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, I've enjoyed this one so hopefully it's not the last time that I see it but if you get the chance to have a go at this beer I really recommend that you do. It works very nicely. If you like your brown ales a little bit more roasty and toasty and this is one that I think you will quite enjoy actually. So let's leave it at that just now. So once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comments section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Lemelo of Gord's Brewery as well. And I'm sure we'll return to these guys at some point in the fairly near future. But this has been a really interesting one to review. Make sure you check out my social media. Make sure you check out this beer. And you will see more from me over the next little while. Until the next time, stand you just now. And I'll catch you guys later. The Hot Patch from Lemelo of Gorsbrugery in Eslev here in Skåne in the south of Sweden. Slange, Skull.